Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Humanity's Voice. I am excited about this interview today. Um, well, excited and it's kind of a hard interview, I'm sure, for some of you. Um, I'm going to interview a gentleman by the name of Andrew, who has served in our Navy, has served our country, and recently got discharged because he refused to get the jabby jab. Um, Got to be careful what I say here because I'm probably going to get kicked off of every social media platform of whatever I say. Um, but I, we all talk about abuse with ministers and government and different things. And listen, this is abuse. They're wanting our servicemen to inject themselves with an experimental drug. It's not even a legit drug. It, there's no reason for it. This is a scandemic. We all know. I believe Andrew believes the same way that a lot of you that follow me do as well. So I just wanted to bring him on, give him a voice. I hope anyone else that is a patriot and has a podcast, bring him on and give him a voice as well, because we need to understand what's going on in this country. And this is communism on another level. And our people that are serving our country should be respected. And this is not respect of our servicemen. So I'm going to bring Andrew. I'm going to let him tell the story and ask him questions in between. Hi, Andrew. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Adjusting to the new lifestyle. Um, God, thank you for having me on tonight. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course. I mean, I know adjustment to civilian life is probably difficult because you're like, it's a totally different world. So, I mean, you just tell us your story. Tell us what happened. And, you know, hey, but this is your your time, your voice. All right. So um, I joined the Navy back in July of 2016. I, um, I served for five years, nine months, uh, completely honorably, no, no, not even a little hiccup, not nothing at all. And then, uh, November 28th of last year, the secretary of defense came out and said that they're going to mandate the COVID vaccine. And I am very firm in my beliefs that I would never get it. Not, I, not only, I don't care about the political side of it. I just, I don't care at all. I just, for me personally, I'm young. I'm only 24 years old. Yeah. I didn't, I don't need it. I'm a healthy person. I'm, I'm good. Um, I actually had COVID on, uh, during Christmas of last year, actually, and I survived and I'm here to tell my story. So, um, but yeah, so the COVID mandate came out November 28th and they basically told us, Hey, you're going to get discharged if you refuse. And I was like, okay. And there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of hype up what kind of discharge it was going to be. A lot of people were saying it was going to be an OTH and other than honorable, meaning I wouldn't get any benefits or anything really. And uh, obviously that was a lie. Uh, they came out and the Navy really stalled a lot on their guidance coming in. Uh, it wasn't until about, I would say, middle or late January, the first guidance came out saying that, hey, your guys are going to get honorably discharged if you have less than six years in. And then if you have more than six years, it was going to be a uh, general under honorable conditions, meaning that you would lose like your GI Bill for college. Okay. And uh, so me, five years, nine months, I had a uh, honorable discharge with a RE4 code, meaning it's a serious offense misconduct. And what what that really serves, not too sure. I don't I don't know how that affects me at all. I don't really think it does, honestly. Um, that just means that I, I can't join the Coast Guard, the Army, the Air Force, anything. Just non back in. So it came to so I was kicked out on April eighth, so last Friday, and obviously that is that is uh, five months, almost five months past the official mandate. And what cracked me up about the whole thing is I was able to PT with the group. I was able to go to all of our like morning, afternoon meetings, our trainings. I, I was a part of the command, like completely, like nothing was wrong. And my command specifically, they were awesome. Like chain of command, they were completely like understanding with my situation. They didn't like shun me at all. They were super, they were super great. It's like, it's the hierarchy of the Navy, really. It's like the sec def, the Pentagon people that are really just, they're taking this to a whole nother level, acting like we're some health threat that I'm going to infect the entire fleet. 
uh, my entire command, uh, they we went through like a two month route of everybody had COVID. Everybody got it. And I didn't get it until, like I said, Christmas of last year. And I was like one of the last people to get it. And I was gone for, I was on leave actually, whenever I got it, I was at home, I was here. And um, I was sick for four days. I came back to work. I was fine. Uh, we had a mask mandate at work. Uh, you know, me being me, I'm not I didn't really wear it often. Like I wore it like whenever like the CO was around stuff like like general meetings and stuff. I didn't get I didn't I didn't really get in trouble for it. But you know, I'm such a health risk. You know, you yeah. gotta watch out for me. <laughs> twenty four man, you listen. Twenty four year olds running around. We all better be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. You better walk the other direction if you see me coming. But so, uh, right. yeah, me and my wife, we were told, let's see, we were told like middle of March, like, hey, I think it's coming. I think you're going to get out. The, the rumors are out, whatever. And uh, my wife actually moved down to South Carolina without me to start like getting a job. We almost bought a house and every and um, so she moved down here. She was gone for about a month. Like uh, she moved down at the beginning of February and then. She was just going to stay down there until I was processed out. And then it came about, everybody was like, actually, I don't know, man. Doesn't look like you're going to get kicked out. And I was like, okay. It was like four straight months of waking up like, hey, today could be the last day. I have no idea. And she moved back up to Jersey. She got a job again in New Jersey. And then literally the day after she started her new job, I got we got like this little letter. Um, I, I would show other people's names on it. But yeah, it, it just it's, it's a message. It's like the it's called our 10 day letter. Okay. And uh, we got 10 days to separate from the date. This last message came out saying, hey, you're gone. You're getting kicked. You have 10 days to move, you know, start your life over and everything. So this basically just says discharge the list of members within 10 days of receipt of this message. Prepare the DD2 or DD form 214. And then it says dischargeable re4 serious offense misconduct and it has the list of there was 24 people in the batch of um kickouts of this time and they were all navy anywhere from uh e1 to e5 so what it looks like they're explain doing is they're starting e1 and e5 because we're all civilians so explain to us for the ones that are watching what's e1 to e5 like i know that's a rank but explain that yeah so the the ranking system uh in the navy goes from e1 to e9 um so Everybody goes in usually as an E1 to E3, depending on like if you have like some ROTC from high school or some college credits. But so I was an E5, so I was a second class petty officer is what they called me. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was like a, it's kind of like a, a manager at a store. That's kind of like the the rank that E5 is at. Um, and then E1s are like the new people. So like E1 to E3, they're anywhere from like, you know, fresh out of boot camp to probably two, three, maybe sometimes four years in. But usually you make E4 right around like your three, four year mark, somewhere around there. So these are the people like all of us. I I don't know for sure, but like myself and there was another guy actually in my command that left with me. Um, he was in, I want to say, year two of his contract. And like I said, I was right at almost at my six year mark. So I wouldn't have gotten an honorable if they would have waited three months. Wow. But uh, I guess I'm happy they oh, did that. Yeah. I don't know. Do you still get your benefits or is that one of the things that you can't get now because they dishonorably discharged you? No, actually, I got an honorable. With an offense. You were honorable, but you have an offense. Yeah. So, yeah, I uh, I keep all my benefits. Like uh, the G, uh, I don't know if you know what the GI bill is. Yep. basically this thing that we, we pay into for college and I get like 36 months of college that they'll like, they'll pay me a monthly housing allowance when I go like based off the area of where I'm at in, in, in school and stuff like that. So it's actually really helpful. Um, and that was one of the things that I would lose if I would have been past six years. But since, you know, they got rid of me three months before that, I keep that. So uh, I'm actually looking into it as we speak, uh, looking into starting college and just, you know, getting that, which, that's another thing. Like they're going to label me this health risk that I'm like a, a non patriot. I hate my country, stuff like that. But then they allow me to have all my benefits. Like, I, right. Well, just, what are the questions? The... Go ahead. It's well, one of the questions I'm getting a lot. Oh, no, you can go ahead. When you get into the um, military or Navy, you have to get a bunch of different 
um, jabs. I got to be careful because I'll get kicked off here, but you got to get a bunch of different ones. So people are like, and I know we're going to talk about your Twitter because it went viral and you're getting a lot of hate. I've noticed that. So we'll, we'll get there, but <laughs> that's an important thing. Um, but why not this one? I mean, like you said, you're healthy, but you have to get these other ones. So what was, what made you the decision on this one particular? Like, I'm not going to have it. Not gonna oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Funny that you mentioned that because that's like the most frequent comment that I see on that tweet. Yeah. So, so to me, the other vaccines that we got, I, I'm not going to lie. I think there's what, 18 of them, 17 or 18 that are required. Uh, once you go into boot camp and they like line you up, they do this little shot train. It's wow. those. So uh, they've been around for so long. They've been tested. They've been properly tri clinically trialed. And, it, and it's just this vaccine came out in nine months. And if it if it works on people, that that's that's great. I mean, if, if you got it and you're still alive, you're kicking that that's good for you. But for me personally, uh, there was a couple Marines that were in my command. So it was like Navy Marines were kind of like split almost 50 50. Uh, there was a couple Marines that I personally knew that got this vaccine with the mandate. And they're young, just like me. I, I want to say he was like 25 and the other one was about 28. And they had actual heart problems from this. And me, I wasn't really on the fence. Just me personally, I would just say I'm young. I don't need it. I'm a healthy person. I didn't think I've never thought COVID was as much of a threat as they made it. Like right. I, I'm not downplaying the people that died. I understand people that died. But in my personal opinion, people die every day from the flu, from you can get a like you can get a sinus infection and die. I mean, it's very rare, but you still can. And right. just to me, like people were not dropping dead left and right and all over the place. And the people that I knew that had COVID, they were sick for like four days and then right. were good. And then the most severe cases, a lot of the times they had underlying conditions that, I mean, I don't know for sure I don't have them, but I was pretty positive. Like I do not have an underlying condition, so I don't need it. And the thing that really threw me off the most is how much they're pushing it. There is a reason that a nine month vaccine that, mind you, the people that are pushing it now were against it whenever Donald Trump was the president. Right. They they were like, no, I would never get this. And then the power switches and they're like, you have to get this. And that was the thing that really got me. I'm like, what has changed within whenever it came out November and then February when you take power? Like what changed in those three months that you're like, never to yes, you have to. And it's just, it really just, it, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it turned yeah. me off from the whole thing. And I, I just, I'm good with my life. Like, like I said, I had COVID and I am perfectly fine. And I just, I just didn't need it. So to anybody that asked that, and I, trust me, I've gotten, I'd say like 3000 comments at least that asked me that question. I don't even right bother to pay attention to them. I'm just like, you know what? Cause I don't have to, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you, that's so, um, I, for people that don't know, I saw his tweet and I was like, I got to talk to this guy. This is awesome. He's standing up, he's standing up to our country, he's standing up to the Navy, like for what you believe is right. And for you, for your body, right. It's our body, our choice, whether you're a woman or a man, it's our choice of what we do with our body. And no one can tell us what we could do. Mm -hmm. So you had this tweet that like went viral <laughs> about getting kicked off and then you're getting like it. Well, it did. And you're getting hate now. I mean, people telling you, and these are the people that are crazy uh, that are like the pro vaccine, like psychos that they're like, this isn't even a vaccine. That's a thing. This isn't a vaccine. So what do you, I mean, you're 24, you're young. I mean, you, like social media is your guys' deal. I'm old, right? But your guys' deal is like social media. So, I mean, how does that make you feel? I mean, it's kind of crazy. They're they're aggressive, some of these tweets. <laughs> yeah, so um, I just pulled up the uh, tweet activity. So, so far, my tweet has been seen 6,602,426 times. Wow. And uh, so the first two days, so I was, I was actually driving home. Uh, from New Jersey to South Carolina. And me and my wife, we stopped at a gas station and I got out and I was just waiting on her. And I was like, man, I'm just going to, you know, just tweet out like, oh, today, today is the day I get kicked out of the U.S. Navy for being unvaccinated. The next thing you know, next, like four hours later, we stop again and it just blew up. Uh, the first, 
I would say 10,000 comments were support. It was just, it was people just saying, Hey, I understand why you did this. Like, thank you for your service. I, I, I don't need people to say that, but it's nice to hear it. it it's cool. It, it was nice to see people back me. And then there was this one guy, his, his name, get his exact name. Uh, it's Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Nance. This guy commented on it. So he's like a super high rank. He was a senior chief in the Navy. So he was an E8, uh, 36 years of intelligence. And he has a million followers on Twitter. And he commented saying, as a former senior chief, I say good riddance. <laughs> and his stance are very, uh, very left, like extremely right. left. Like, um, I'm not going to say everything because you'll probably get censored, you know, if I say what he actually Listen, stands You can for. say whatever you want. It doesn't, I mean, yeah. I will still find ways to post this. Yeah. Don't you worry. <laughs> he is a um, January 6th insurrectionist loving kind of guy. Let's just say that. And this guy got on here and it blew up. Like it went like from right wing to completely left wing. And I have still to today, like right now, I'm still. Still getting DMs. Like there's people. Like I've posted a few. I don't know if you've seen them. I, I've been posting yeah. my favorite ones. And these people, they, they, they uh, yeah, some they, they ones just, on there. Go yeah, ahead. it's it's crazy to me. Like these people, they're the remember these. This is the party of love, peace. But they're calling me a disgrace. That like I, good riddance. You are a disgrace to this country. You are not a patriot. You are a disgrace to the uniform. And I'm just like. I stood up for my beliefs and the, my, the, the funniest thing to me is there's so many comments like you couldn't even protect the health of your fellow coworkers. So how can we trust you to protect us in the time of war? And they're really acting like we're not getting a vaccine. And, and it's just, it just cracks me up. Like on that question, let me stop you there because isn't the Navy's job and the military's job to protect us for our choices? So if they take the choices away from you, isn't that taking away our freedoms? How I don't understand how people don't see this. I mean, it, isn't that don't you think that in your head? Like, <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. Like, I understand there, there's a, the big argument in the comments is, oh, you swore an oath to listen to all your orders. I completely understand that. And like if they were like, hey, you need to get a flu shot. And I was like, no. And then they, they kicked me out for that. Okay, that's fine. Like I, I was stupid in that decision. But when you sit here and uh, a shot that is questionably FDA approved, by the way, it's, it's a little, it's a little questionable. Like uh, there's certain doses that are approved, but like, are those right. doses actually on the base? That was a whole question. Of course, you're, you're never going to know the answer to that. Of course, they're going to tell you. But I look at it as I don't see this order being lawful. And like a lot of people, like what, what people don't understand is there's a lot of people in the military with like enlisted officer wise. They, they believe this too. Like uh, no, no name dropping uh, just for the sake of, you know, them. But yeah. there's a lot of people that I know personally that are like, this is, this is stupid. Like this has, like, like I said earlier, if this had like a 90% survival rate, I'd understand. But when you have a above 99% chance of living if you get this disease, uh, I think that it's okay to say no. And just to me, the order was not constitutional, in my opinion. And I just said no, and I'm here to speak about it. <laughs> Didn't you take an oath? Like, and listen, maybe I'm naive, I'm not in the military, right? But, you know, I work with what I do. I work with military. Didn't you take not an oath to follow orders? You took an oath to the Constitution and you took an oath to serve our country. There is a difference between taking an oath to the Constitution and to the to the country and to these people that are serving tyrannical orders. I mean, am I wrong? Because you had said you had you took an oath. That, and that's what people are saying to these people. You never took an oath to people, took an oath to the Constitution. Am I wrong on that? Like, I don't know what the oath is in the Navy, so I could be naive here. Well, th there is a part that says that uh, I will obey the orders appointed over me. So, like, if my CO was like, you need to, like, basically like a PT, like we have a PFA, um, uh, it's like a fitness test. You can do it twice a year. You have to do this many push-ups. If my CO was like, you will take this. That is a lawful order. And it's just it's like that. Part, OK, you have to obey those orders. But whenever you have a sec def that kind of he just he pushed this without a plan. 
And with really like no, in my personal opinion, I, you, you look at the, the stats of the military and it leans more like there's more Republicans in the military. And to me, this was like a like a slap in the face, like, oh, we know Republicans like a lot of not all of them, but a lot of Republicans are against this vaccine. So let's mandate it. Let's, this isn't about health at all. Like my good friend in the military, uh, he always told me this is not he- about your health. This is about control and compliance. And this is all this is. And they're, it's just like to me, that's not a lawful order. Like you can't no. tell me a nine month researched and try vaccine is a lawful order. Like, no. No. When you had, so there was 24 people of that you guys all were in this same brigade or whatever you want to call it together. Forgive me for not saying the right terminology again, but you know, so that left, I mean, how many more do you think have walked away from service of our country because of these tyrannical orders? I mean, do you know more than 24? And, and like, and, and the other question is too, is did you not get an option to sign like a religious exemption, a constitutional exemption? Was that just not an option? Cause that's one of the questions I'm getting as well. Yeah. So the, the first part of that question, so these 24 people, it's like spread out like all over the country. Okay. Um, so what there is, is uh, don't quote me on the numbers, but I want to say there's like 3,800 left in the Navy that is either filed for an exemption or is just straight refusing. Um, and the second question, so I, we all had options to put religious exemptions in me personally, I didn't because, uh, like I know a lot of, I know a few people that did, and I actually know a girl Marine in my command that she actually got hers approved. But, um, me personally, I didn't think using God's name in a religious exemption for this vaccine. It wasn't, it wasn't appropriate to me because yeah. I feel like. I had no religious, religious reason to say no. And it was just like a lot of people like they use religious exemptions because they're scared to lose their jobs. And I, I get that. Like, I don't blame them because they're, they're putting you in this like you're, you're like stuck in a corner. And yeah. it's just like you're either going to comply or do this. And a lot of yeah. people like, oh, I can't lose my jobs. I have a family. I get that 100 percent. But to me, I have no kids. It's just me and my wife and my two dogs. So I had mm-hmm. nothing. I really had nothing to lose, really. I just had something to gain. I, I was fighting for my choice and our freedoms. Like, uh, I, like I didn't really fight for our freedoms by doing this, but it's just like standing up saying, like, you can't demand, like, as soon as you snap your finger, you can't demand me to do something. Right. And so that's why I didn't do it, because I just, for me, the religious exemption just didn't fit me. Now, could you have stayed, like, the people that, you know, say the 24 of you, could you have stayed and say, I'm not doing this. I'm going to stay in service. You can't force me to do this. Was that not an option? Because the military or the Navy can take over at any point. Like, I feel like there's more of you guys than there are generals. Unless I'm wrong. I mean, again, this could be naive. You can explain. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, technically you're not wrong, but uh, um, so no, I really didn't have a choice. So but basically what they said is if you don't do the exemption, then you are going to be processed for separation. And they actually there was this injunction that was passed uh, stating that everybody that put in a religious, a religious exemption cannot be separated or processed out at all. So like if I would have, let's say I did do a religious exemption, I wouldn't be out. I'd still be in. But um, so... Um, but no, we really, they basically, so they gave me, um, like I said, this little 10 day letter and then they gave me my orders stating, uh, Hey, you're, you're done. This is your day. You're leaving, uh, April 8th and this is where you're going and have a, have a nice day. <laughs> it was such a short turnaround though. That's the one thing that really angered me was, um, it was 10 days Wow. and it was just, I mean, it's not not a lot of time. I got everything done and I actually had four days to spare, but it's just the simple fact that like, I have to pack my house. I have to figure out a way to move my stuff. I have to get rid of my house. Uh, thankfully I lived in base housing. So it was very easy. I just showed them my orders and my lease was up, but yeah. what if I owned a house? Like I, what I had 10 days to sell it. Like a lot of people, like I read a lot of comments, like, Oh, you knew this was coming. Yes. But then again, no, because I had no idea what date. Like every woke up like, oh, maybe today. 
And I lived like that for four months. And like, that was in lack of better terms, that was hell. Like every yeah. single day, me and my wife were like, uh, like, we get paid and we're like, do we, you know, go have fun on this paycheck or do we save? Like, we're going to have no money. Any, uh, like, uh, what do we do? Right. So it's just, it was really annoying. Well, your wife gets a job too. And so she's like, she doesn't know if she's going to lose that job. She's going to stay there. Like that's, I mean, and you guys are young. I mean, you guys obviously are probably haven't been married long, maybe a few years. I don't know how long you've been married, but you're young and can't have been that long. I mean, right. So you're starting your life. This is going to be a stressful, like heavy thing for you guys at your age to, and to take on and to stand up. You're standing up for what is right, which is why I think that's powerful. People are hating on you, but at 24 to say, you know what? I'm not injecting this into my body. It's unconstitutional. I'm going to stand up for the constitution. That's what that that's the first thing you take an oath to. I don't care who any, what anyone says. Like if you're going to serve our country, you take an oath to the constitution exactly. before exactly. anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So me, I, me and my wife have been married for uh, five years in August. Uh, we got, we got married super young. Um, but yeah, it's been five years in August, by the way. Um, but yeah, the, 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 thank you. The constitution, like you said, I mean, that, that's like the, the binding document of all of this, like with the constitution, the military wouldn't be here. So, you know, I, right. and like, um, oh man, I, I just, there's so much hate and it's just, it, it cracks me up. Like it doesn't affect me at all. Like, I, I don't care what people say about me, but that's fine. I stood up for what I believe in my family believes what I believe in. Uh, they yeah. stood by me. My wife stood by me, her family, my family, and then you and a lot of other people stood by me. And I, so I appreciate that more than anybody ever know, because this is a stressful time. Like she's, like I said, she started her job and day two of her job. I had to call her and be like, Hey, uh, we have 10 days. So you got to quit your, your job. And it was just like, Oh, oh okay. And um, it, the, a lot of people say that I'm doing this for like political gain because I don't know if you noticed, but in my Twitter bio, I have like a political career awaits me. And it's actually, been, it's been a dream of mine for like, since I was like 14 to run for some kind of political office. And uh, it's been like, I've been super strong about it for about three years now. Like I don't like the direction the country's going. And for the most part, like in the military, you really have an option. Like you can't just sit here and be like, oh, I don't like the president. And um, so I was pretty quiet on that. But now, I, I mean, I, my efforts to um, change the direction of this country has been it's at the all time high now because now I'm free to say whatever I want. And um, yeah, so a lot of people say I'm using it for a political game, but I'm not. I don't care if I'm famous. I, I don't care. I'm just doing what I think's right and just saying what I think's right. But, you know, we need good people in government. I mean, I'm a believer in government, but limited government. I think right now the government that we have is illegal. We pay tax dollars, which are illegal. There's a lot. And I think you'll find the people that watch this and that follow me. We love our country. I mean, there's a lot of things that I've done. I mean, my job is, I mean, I go into these dumps and I work for military. I know how, how they work. I've seen military lose their job over the, I don't even know what to call them, the fake JV. Like he's just, I don't even know. He's like out there. Right. And so lose their jobs because they're telling them to stand down when we are on the border and getting, and they're saying, stand down, you can't go in. And these military are saying, no, we took an oath to protect people. And these are children and we're going to go in and get them. Uh, so I respect you highly. And I know that the people that are going to watch this are going to respect you highly. I, I do know you're going to get a lot of hate coming here, but you know what, Lizzie, you want a political career, you're going to need the hate. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get used you know, to it. Yeah, I'm going to read this like statement because I know she had like a point and I and I'm going to I'm going to let you answer it because and this is this is what kind of annoys me about people sometimes is we don't really know the stories to everything. Right. You're you've experienced this. Right. So you're telling us firsthand experience of, of what has happened to you. But it, once we get off here. And I'm going and talking to a friend and I'm saying, hey, I talked to this guy named Andrew Rose. He was in the Navy. Like what I'm portraying to them is not going to be the same as you portraying your story. Right. So people always mm -hmm. like have these comments. So I, I want you to respond to this. I'm going to read it and then you can answer it. Is that OK? Yeah, absolutely. And you can tell me no if you don't want to. Um, 
so this is what she said. And this is not me. This is a, a woman um, that posted on my Telegram. She said, not sure if this is true, Madison. They've been threatening my unvaccinated son-in-law since November. When he said for the last time, I said, no, and I'm not getting it, sir. Just sent him to Hawaii. If you dig and read into the Navy SEALs lawsuit, it has now been spread out to all Navy who didn't have a religious exemption accepted. Well, my son-in-law was refused, so Tyler didn't fill out the paperwork, so he can't be in the lawsuit now. Nothing will happen to this lawsuit ends, and nobody will be kicked out, Madison. It's deemed as punishment to kick out any sailor out, so be careful with this guy. <laughs> I better be careful. Like when you walk around, you know, with the COVID. Um, Tyler and all unvaxxed have been sent to their regular stations, like Hawaii is where Tyler just went to Sunday, his original sta station since he got out of a school before COVID started. And they put him in a hold pattern in, pattern in a hotel for 48 hours, but they will not deem it quarantine. And they will see if they give him duties because he did not consider, he's not considered active duty. He's in the process of being kicked out, so he will be able to go on base Wednesday at Pearl Harbor for the first day. From November 1st to Sunday, he was in MS at his boat, but is scheduled every day, was checked in, and he sat in his, I'm going to say this word wrong, barracks? Barracks, yeah, 24-7. They are punishing him with boredom, loneliness, with no one else in the room as a roommate in isolation. Four and a half months didn't break Tyler. I'm asking if this Navy sailor really got kicked out. Then why was everyone, even my son-in-law, told honorable discharge with GI Bill and benefits? No one has been kicked out that Tyler knows, not anyone. The Navy can't. They, that's why they are stringing these guys along, saying that they aren't getting out but while they sit in your room all day with no watch duty, no grunt work, nothing. So can you answer? And I think you kind of answered it a little bit because you did wait for four and a half months, as you said. So can you answer that? Because this is this is her question. <laughs> yeah. So um, the only thing that I can think of. So what there's so many people in the military that are actually saying no or put a religious exemption in. Right. And I think this came as a shock to everybody because what what in my personal opinion, I, I'm not too sure, but like. Yeah. I think the SecDef, uh, Lloyd Austin, if anybody doesn't know. <laughs> and that's Secretary, Secretary of Defense for people that don't know what his short term. Just yeah, wanted. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, uh, a wonderful guy. Um, he, uh, so basically he put this order, was like, hey, you're done if you're not vaccinated. And I don't think, I, I think everybody was like, oh, well, that's easy. It's military. They have to listen. And then people are like, no. And I think that kind of shocked them. That's my personal opinion. So, like I said, there's about 3,800 Navy, and it took them, I want to say the first batch of people that they kicked out was, I want to say, like sometime in February, like near Valentine's Day. I could be wrong on that, but it was sometime in February. And it was only 10 people. And then, wow. so they've done 10, 50, and then 24. And then I don't know if any other, I think they've only done three batches, uh, if I'm... Okay. If I'm not, Do you mistaken. know there's a lawsuit going on, and can you join that lawsuit? Um, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, so I knew about it. I haven't looked into it. Uh, I know it was like the, with the Navy SEALs. It was like they basically told them that they can't do religious exemptions, and they were gonna take like they were taking people out of combat, saying like it, there was people on missions that they were like, oh hey, you're not vaccinated, come back, and th wow. so they're like absolutely not. So I'm not. Not too sure how the lawsuit went, but I, I heard that they won. And then now it's like it's in different stages. I, I, I'm i not too sure. But yeah. with I, I know that there's that came out that if you did put a religious exemption in, that they will not get rid of you at all until they rule officially on it. Because the Navy, the Marines, um, Army, I, I want to say Air Force, too, but I'm not too sure. I don't know if the Air Force approved any or not, but they've only they've approved like very little. Like the Marines, they just approved their first like like dozen. And I actually knew what, like I said earlier, I knew one of the girls that actually got approved. And um, so they're approving so little. And what, five months in almost to this mandate, the 28th of this month will be five months. And, and there's so many, so many religious exemptions. So I understand why it takes a while, but like you can't sit on them forever. So a lot of people are getting irritated. And then they were just, they were starting to process people out like, oh, we didn't accept it. Sorry. Bye-bye. Wow. And so that's why that court case came about saying, hey, we're halting this. You cannot. And then 
Like with her son, I, that baffles me how they're treating him. That that's crazy. Like for me personally, I wasn't treated like that. They told Navy people so like TAD is temporary assigned duty. So like if I was to let's say go to school in Virginia, they would send me TAD from my command to that schoolhouse in Virginia. Well, they told me I can't do that anymore. I couldn't go TAD. I couldn't have any kind of special orders, nothing like that, because I'm unvaccinated. So like uh, the fact that he was actually able to go to Hawaii, I, okay, count that as a little bit of a win, I guess, because usually, I mean, like for me, like let's say my command just said, oh, we're going to Florida, like like we're going to Key West to the beach down there for weeks on this de uh, detachment. I couldn't go because I'm not vaccinated. So, right. Yeah, but um, hey, better places, worse places than Hawaii to be bored at, right? <laughs> I hate yeah. to say. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Well, tell us. So you're you said you have a political career. You want a political career. Um, I have two other questions for you. Um, what what do you want to do in politics? What what's your goal? So uh, my my end goal one day, I would like to be a senator one day. Okay. But um, I think I'm going to start small. Uh, I'm going to go like city council first. Uh, once I actually like plant roots here and actually get established. I'm going to go like city council, but I really want, I really want to run for Congress like within like the next, like I'd say like minimum, like 2026. That that's my goal. Um, could, could convince my family, you know, to get on that train with me. But uh, <laughs> it's just, like, I see people like uh, Madison Cawthorn, Matt Gates, uh, yeah. Marjorie Taylor Green, Lauren Boebert, all these, like, especially Madison Cawthorn. Like he, and uh, I don't, I don't know if you know that the guy that's running in North Carolina, his name is a uh, Bo Hines. Yeah. Uh, Trump yeah. just endorsed him. Like, those, those two, especially Madison and Bo, they are yeah. my, they're, they're like my inspiration in all this because they really just are young, just like me. Like Madison Cawthorn's like what, 26? Yeah. And he has, he just, he leads how, in my opinion, a leader should lead. Like he says it how it, it should be. He fights for what's right. And he doesn't he doesn't bow down to, you know, any company that says no, he doesn't bow down to him. And to me, I've always been like that, clearly. <laughs> and I just. I love this country a lot, like you know, literally a flag tattoo and all. And I it. it's just I, I am such I, I just love it. And I just hate to see where we're at now. Like, it's just like. From you look back six years ago and then you look here and you're like, where, where, what, what went wrong? Like, we all know what went wrong, but how did it happen? And I just want to be at least a part of attempting to fix everything. Like, I know it's a lot to fix, but I just really just want to bring it back to, you know, where we're actually respected and not laughed at. And that'd be nice. Yeah. Right. You want to be on the right side of history. And, you know, one thing that I've noticed in the politics, I mean, and people think that I'm crazy and I, I bring it up just because of what I do is, a lot of it revolves around human trafficking. A lot of the left, that's what they've done. Mm -hmm. they've, they've harmed our kids. They've harmed our children. And we need people that are going to be in office that are going to take a stand against that and take a stand against evil. So that's that's my next question to you is, you said you don't want a religious exemption. Do you believe in God? And were you raised in, and I'm not talking about religion. I hate religion. I'm talking about a relationship with God. Do you believe in him? Oh, absolutely. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's funny that you mentioned that. So uh, I was not raised in a religious household. I, I wasn't um, like my parents were super open to it. Like, Hey, if you want to do this, you do that. It's just, I was never really around it. Uh, my wife, uh, her, she was born and she was like raised in a super religious, not super religious, but religious household, you know, they, they yeah. and her parents actually got me into this. And uh, I just actually got the, um, Oh wow. What, Oh man, I just, they, her mom just bought me a new Bible actually that I've actually been reading every night for about, uh, I just started it about 16 days ago and I've been reading into it a lot and I am not as close as with God as I want to be, but I'm actually, you know, every day I'm working towards building that relationship stronger because I, I've just, I've been, I just never really looked into it. And then my wife was like, Hey, well, you know, like, how do you feel about this? And I'm open to it. And especially now, like everything that's going on, I feel like we need God right now more than anything, because I read the Bible. Like I just got through the book of Matthew, like about two days ago. And I just read it and you see just some of the stuff that they say in there. It relates so much to what's going on now. And it, it's just, it's scary if you think about it, because yeah. like he, he outlined like, Hey, you see people that go this way, they're, 
they lean this way. And it's just like, you see it like, and that made me, that drove me to like, Hey, I, I need to get closer with God. Like now, like this yeah. is the time. And that's, I'm actively doing that every single night. So, and, and that's all it is. I mean, that's the best way you can do it. Don't listen to man. Don't listen to other people is read your Bible and hear him talk. Wait till you get to revelation. Then you're going to really, your mind's really going to be blown. Cause that's like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's going on here. My wife just told me a couple days ago. She was like, "Hey, wait till you get to that book. That'll really get you." And I'm like, you oh, see? Hey, I'm ready." <laughs> She's a smart woman. You know, <laughs> listen, your wife's a hero in this too because I know that she, you know, wives back you. She's backing you, and you know, it can't be easy for her either. Right? Her life's up, you know, in arms with yours. But there's a purpose for you, and there's a purpose why you stood up. And you know what? There's a purpose why. Like you're one of the only ones. I mean, there are people, but there's also people that don't want to talk about it. They're just like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm done. I just like don't want to. And I know a lot of people are going to be encouraged and people that are in the service fighting and the ones that have been kicked out. I mean, hopefully some of these people will reach out to you. And maybe you can help them a little bit or just have a bond from that. You know what I mean? Oh, so. yeah, absolutely. Um there's actually, there's been quite a few people that's reached out to me on Twitter, like uh, some service members. Um, I'd say about 10 that they DM me and they were like, hey man, uh, I'm actually going through the same process. Like what, what was it like? Uh, what do I expect? Cause you know, they're just sitting on everybody, just, you know, stringing them along, toying with them. And uh, I was just like, hey man, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm, I'm my DM is always open. If you ever want to ask a question, you're too scared to, you know, have a voice about it. Like me, the only reason I tweeted out about this and I'm willing to talk about it is because people need to understand that it's not just like, oh, you are you're an unvaccinated swine. They are treating people like garbage because we just chose not to get vaccinated. That's why I want to bring it about. I, I don't want the fame. I, I don't care about the fame. This is not why I'm, I'm doing it just to say, hey, like like Johnny down the road has no idea how the military is treating their people people and now they do and that's that's all I, I just want to shed a little bit of light as much light as i can on it and uh if anybody is too scared to come out i completely understand because uh, the, you gotta have tough skin to get through some of the some of these comments like they come after you but well wow, so i read some of them i i can't i didn't want to say one here i mean like listen it's it makes you so uneducated when you call people names or you go after someone's mama like I mean, the one you tweeted, I was like, I, I listen, I'm a mom and someone tweeted, I, I wanted to go crazy, but I'm like, let me go crazy after I interview him because on the person that said that, because I'm like, who, who said, like, where, who's your mama? Cause I'm going to go talk to your mom and tell, show her this tweet. <laughs> yeah, like I woke up this morning. I, you know, I had my breakfast and I was just sitting there. Like, oh, I had like 25 notifications in my DMs, and I scroll through them all. And it's just like, if you you're a spineless this that and i'm just like well and then that yeah that one guy was like oh yeah you're your mom and this and i'm like what are you talking about I'm like get a life man and it's just the funny thing is is you see a trend like if you look at these comments it's all like she her uh pro ukraine you know it, it's it, there's a trend it's just it's the uh the pronoun gang they're coming after me is what i like to call them they're uh they're the party of love, but they're going to attack me, you know? <laughs> so you um, identify as a... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah, my, um, yeah, my, my, uh, my pronouns are yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Listen, it, it's a crazy game. Oh, I do have one last question. Is there not any, like, people in leadership that have stood up? I, I mean, that's what, I mean, I know that the left is crazy, but like anyone that was your boss or your boss's boss that were like, we are not doing this, that you, like you were proud to serve under, or did you leave just like, wow, I can't believe that these people that I were my bosses just, I, I don't know what to call them, but that they yes. just didn't stand up. Yeah. So um, for me personally, so it, it's, it's harder for, like CEOs, like officers, like they have this, they have this like rule of conduct. Like if they speak out at all, like, let's say I'm a CEO and I want to be, like, man, Joe Biden, like, I really hate this guy. Like everything he's doing, like that, that uh, Marine Lieutenant Colonel that came out and you know how they like threw him in prison. Um, yeah. 
it's completely messed up, but technically by like their law and like they're not law, but like their rule book that they have to follow everything that happened to him. Like he knew it was going to happen because like that, that's just how it goes. And like, I personally, like, obviously I don't agree with that at all. Like everything he said, I 100% agree with like, everything he said was to the T perfect, but you, you look at it like a legality standpoint, like it had to happen to him. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because, like, but they're like behind the scenes. They're like, man, like this sucks. Like there, there's like, there's nothing you can do about it, but like, I support you. And for me personally, every single person leadership wise to me was amazing. Like I couldn't have had a better support system in my command. Um, I'm not going to name any names because I don't want anybody to get in trouble, but no, don't. <laughs> they, they were so, they were so nice to me. They like, they, they helped me everything I needed. Like I got my 10 day letter and they were like, dude, Go home, pack your house, get your wife situated, get your life together. Don't show up to work until you're ready. And so basically that 10 days, like I didn't have to worry about, oh, got to go into work at nine and or seven and don't come back home till three. Like they gave me time to get all my stuff together. So they were amazing. Um, um, but it's now there's plenty of officer. Like I'm not getting the shot. There's plenty of them. Yeah. And kudos to them because they're going through it because just the higher, higher you are, it's just the harder it is. There's a lot of standing all and like they haven't kicked any of them out. All the officers, they're here, still here. You know, major health, you know, still uh, still in the military. <laughs> right. Wow. Um, well, yeah, listen, is me, there any... Great. Oh, you cut out. Go ahead. You said for oh, you no, personally and then... No, you said for you personally, and then it cut out. That was it. Oh no, just for me personally, it was just such a great experience. Like I, I could, for for the circumstances, it was a great experience through with that I went it through or went through it with. Yeah. Was there anything else that you want people to know? Um, and then how can people, I know you're on Twitter and you said that was your only social media. So how people, can people follow you? The, the loving Patriots, how can they follow you? <laughs> yeah, so um, I was actually, so I uh, got banned from Instagram about a year ago because, uh, you know, I'm a far right extremist. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was so, I was so censored on Facebook that, I couldn't even say like, good morning. Well, like I never did, but like I, I could post like a uh, huge Steelers fan. So I always posted like, Oh yeah, the Steelers suck this year. <laughs> and people, no, nobody would see it. Like my wife's like, Oh, I thought you posted something on Facebook about me. And I was like, Oh yeah, I posted these pictures. She didn't see it. Cause I was so censored. So I was like, you know what? I'm done. Like I, I got shadow banned and like Facebook jailed so many damn times. Like I couldn't even count. So, um, yeah, so Twitter's the only thing I got. Uh, Andrew Rose SC is my username. Um, follow me, and if you do follow me, send me a message. It, like, if you want to talk, because like right now, my Twitter, like I went from a hundred followers to almost seven thousand in forty-eight hours. So there's a lot of people that I still have to follow back. But like, um, just you know, shout me out, send me a message. I'll follow you back for sure. I'm still, you know, I'm. I'm packing all my stuff, so it's very hard to go through everything and follow everybody back. But eventually, I'll get around to that. But um, yeah, my DMs are open, so if you, you know, want to ask questions, like if you know, check up on me or whatever you want to do, like just send me a DM and I'll, I'll answer 100. I check those almost like usually right before I go to bed. I just, you know, I got to see all the hate that I get. So you know, <laughs> good, good message here and there will never hurt. <laughs> Listen, for someone that gets a lot of threats, take it as a compliment. It means your voice is powerful. I mean, Antifa and BLM are my best friends because they send me death threats daily. So, you know, and, and now like I have like the religious crazy people that if I say something against their pastor, so take it as a compliment is that your voice is, is powerful. Um, and, and on behalf, I know, of, I know that you said you don't need people to say this, but I have kids. If they see a serviceman, they have to say this because I believe it. I, I do thank you for your service. I think that everyone should appreciate people that are serving our country. I think that we need to respect you. And we need to respect that your decision of standing up for what is right. And that to me is huge and powerful. And I'm, I can't wait to follow your political career. I'll vote for you 
And if you get crazy, I'll be the first one to come at you and say, hey, wait a minute. You're turning left. Okay, stop it. <laughs> no, but, no, but seriously, th thank you for the support and having me on here. And um, but, um, but actually, I would like to shout out all of the haters on my post. I said, like, especially Malcolm Nance, if you happen to see this, thank you. Because not only did you give me joy by reading all these comments, uh, you actually blew up my tweet more. Like all these people that are like, oh, you're ignorant, you're stupid. They're giving me more attention. Hey, all press is good press, right? So thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, right. they're, they're, you just blew up his followers to 7,000. Your million followers are coming over. So, hey, so <laughs> There's so many people that like, they comment on all my posts and they, they it's like anti me comments like, oh, you're a disgrace, blah, 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 blah. But they follow me. So I'm like, hey, uh, I mean, I must be doing something right. I got the haters following me now, so I'm good. <laughs> You've arrived. You've arrived when the haters have started to hate on you. So, so. If anyone watching any Patriot or people in the Patriot, like, I hate the word movement. It's like annoys me, but I have to say it because I don't know how else to say it. Patriot movement, whatever, Patriots. Please interview him and get his story out there because we need to, these are the stories that we need to start hearing and we, because people need to know the reality of what's going on in our country. And this is a huge issue because there, now we have good men and women that are, are leaving the service because they're standing up for what's right. And then we have these idiots that are still serving, not that all of them, I mean, but that sounds like horrible, but there's like the bad ones that stay and comply with things that are unconstitutional and then they want us america to do that and it's just no we live in the best country i'm with you i love my country more than anything and we got to stand up stand up to what is right and i don't mean to call them idiots they're not idiots they're serving our country so i apologize <laughs> uh, yeah, not there, there's a, the, most of them are good but trust me i've met a lot of idiots in the military that yeah. are just like oh. and hey but hey but if you get a dy you're good nine times out of ten you're good if you get a dy but if you don't get that COVID shot peace like it's, uh, I, no listen, sense. I, I got to say that this, I can't, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. There, I have a neighbor and her, I don't, boy, whatever. He was like going through trial for like pedophilia. And I'm like, they just let him off. I'm like, of course. So, but don't get the jab. You're going to get kicked out, but you her harm a child. You could just stay. And he's in the air force, not the Navy, but it's still like, this is so ridiculous that this this is where yeah. it's come to that over this shot, but all the other things that are really wrong and should be stood up to aren't. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you have a bunch of people trying to groom children and, uh, you know, uh, the don't skate bill uh, supporters. And it's just like uh, or uh, not supporters, the uh, the people against that bill. And they're coming after children like, oh, hey, this is uh, how you have sex and you're four years old. So you need to know this. But then, hey, if you don't get that shot, you are being crucified. Like, oh, I appreciate it. Thanks. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is the country we live in now. Go pro pedophilia and anti uh, freedom of speech and choice. So there you go. <laughs> right? Listen, let them try to come for our guns and then see what happens. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah, I have plenty of those. So yeah, come after me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Everyone watching. Thank you so much. We, uh, Andrew, seriously, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your service. And tell your wife, thank you for hers because we know she supports you. She's your backbone, I'm sure. So um, we appreciate it. And we're going to be praying over you, um, just protection over your family. So we appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, so, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. And like I said, my DMs are always open. So if you ever need anything, feel free to contact me. Of course. Stay there, okay? <laughs>